Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our focus now is in Kaduna State. It was grounded on Monday when organized labor started its five-day warning strike in the state. Uh, on Tuesday, the governor, uh, Nasser Arafai, declared the Nigerian president, or national president rather, of the NLC wanted for economic sabotage. Uh, of course, uh, the NLC president, Ayub Awaba, has in turn dared the governor. It's been a mixture of you know, numerous events uh, in Kaduna State. Of course, uh, late yesterday, we also learned of the sacking of nurses and lecturers. We're joined this morning by a journalist, Charles Ideho, uh, who's speaking on these issues. Of course, uh, we'll later be joined by the national president of the uh, NLC, Ayub Awaba. But first of all, Mr. Ideho, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. It's been a very dramatic uh, 48 hours in Kaduna State. Yes. Um, yes. First of all, with the actions of the NLC and organized labor, and of course, the reactions of the Kaduna State uh, governor. Uh, there's, mm. you know, numerous, um, um, you know, thoughts on, you know, this issue. But let's hear from you. Uh, what's your assessment of what has taken place in the last 48 hours? Well, first, I think uh, it's, it's quite uh, regrettable. And of course, if you also look at it, it's also avoidable. But um, Erufai, being who he is, if you follow Erufai for his days as uh, the minister of uh, the FCT, you know that there is a man that loves grandstanding. He loves a man who wants to always uh, uh, attract attention to himself, even for even for for the wrong reasons. So I, I think um, having spent so much time in this in this um, in his life and in government. And he understands the working of government. That's why I say it's, it's uh, avoidable. Because first, he is uh, pushing further the issue of redundancy in uh, the government. I quite agree with that. But there are extant laws that he must follow. For instance, he being the governor of uh, Kaduna State today, there are laws and processes that put him there. So when you also are dealing with a section of the society, you must also have a recourse to processes and law before you can take decisions. It must also be re uh, reminded that we are no longer in the military era where you have to use a military fiat when you just wake up, somebody who, of course, is uh, the be all and end all of all of us will stand up and make a broker to say, social person remains stand and all that. We are governed by laws, and those laws must be respected. That's why we are not a banana republic. So I think, as I said, and I would also reiterate it, that it is unnecessary and it's also avoidable. Okay, but so you know, people, you know, have also said that the NLC may have taken things too far. Do you agree, or you know, is the NLC within its right to protest the sacking of workers? Well, why is NLC in existence? NLC in existence to protect its workers. NLC will not look at a situation where its workers are I mean, their rights are being trampled upon. Then you expect them to 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 go sit down. I am not a fan of the NSC, but on this issue, I think the NSC, will, we have to look at their, their, their plight. We have to look at even what they are also looking for. For instance, how can you sack a workforce? You said anybody that is 50 years and above remains sacked. Is that what the law says? If the law says it's either you attain the age of 60 or 35 years old, 35 years old, whichever yes. one comes first. Then you can now disengage the person. You can say because of uh, economic crunch and all that. Then you say once you are above fifty, you remain you are sacked. And then if uh, from uh, if you are on grade level one to six, you will now be converted to uh, uh, to a casual worker. It doesn't work anywhere in the whole world. Hmm. So that's why I said NSC. Yes, I may not like them, but on this matter, I think they have not done anything that is wrong at all. Okay, Ms. Aideho, I want us to talk yeah. about the, uh, the protest yesterday and how thugs were, you know, just went to the protest grounds and began to carry sticks to disrupt the protest. Lots of people have said these are political thugs hired by the government. We have no idea as to the facts, you know, of that. But um, what are your comments regarding this? Because this is something we also saw during the NSAS protest when uh, thugs seemed to disrupt uh, a peaceful protest going on. Well, that, that's also said earlier that uh, it is uh, it's, uh, avoidable because everybody should have known that anywhere in Nigeria where there are protests, at the end of the day, hoodlums will always find occasion to take over, which is exactly what happened on yesterday. So if exactly if he had told the line of negotiation to negotiate with the 
leadership of NSC. This could have been avoided. Because even because when a, a protest starts, you can hardly determine his, his, uh, his end. His end, in both cases, are usually non palatable. That's exactly what we are also seeing in Kaduna State. But I think we can still tell the part of sanity uh, when if everybody can look at it and shield his sword, I call it sword, in the manner of speaking, to say, okay, let's go and talk so that we look at the issues on the table and look at how we can mitigate the already convoluted uh, uh, society me and say say that he has because if he continues to, to pursue what he's pursuing this is one world that everybody cannot win i can tell you that well, talking Hello? about yes i can hear you mr i was still talking yes. about the issue of talks you said talks will always find a way you know into those protest grounds but do you think they come there just because they want to come there or, you know, if this is something that was sponsored, because my colleague shared a video earlier that he watched about, you know, one of the thugs confronting someone else for money he was promised to go and cause chaos. Well, um, another thing we also look at is this. First, Erufai being the governor of Kaduna State, he may not be loved by everyone in that state. There are also, we are journalists, of course, we, know, we hear a lot of things, our ears are on ground and all that. You must also know that he has very powerful interest in Kaduna, who may want to do him in, in whatever guise. They may just be looking for an opportunity like this for him to, for him to play into their hands. Such people who also use talk, even the government itself can also be, uh, we can also wave them aside that they are not also, also, also culpable in also using uh, 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 talks because they could also use talk in order to discredit uh, the protest. So it could go, the pendulum could go either, either way. That's what I'm saying that it was avoidable for the, for the, for the past that up in issue, if they had told the line of sanity to say, okay, let's come and look at all this issue on ground critically, taking into consideration that there is a labor act, there's also civil service rules, all these things, there are extant laws that spells out exactly how labor should be engaged, people should be sacked from their work, and the remuneration to be paid to them. Look at the over 21,000 uh, uh, teachers that were sacked in 2017. As we speak, they have, I understand, they have not even received their, their, their uh, uh, what do you call it, the seven uh, packages. So there are so many issues before I reply. And if uh, he lost uh, Kaduna State, he should go back to the negotiation table and then let them begin to negotiate and see how they can put a, a, a stop. To right. this needless, needless uh, wahala they have uh, posted upon the people. Well, you, you, um, you described uh, the Kaduna State governor, you know, in the start of this interview as grandstanding. Um, but, you know, I want you, you know, to also speak on, you know, the, uh, his reaction to uh, protesting, seeing that a couple of years ago, he supported the NLC and TUC. He was part of, you know, um, a few protests, you know, in the, uh, against the previous administration. He tweeted yes. things like uh, no retreat, no surrender a couple of years ago. Um, so, you know, what seems to have changed with regards to his understanding of the rights to protest and um, uh, the uh, use of the NLC um, in Nigeria? Well, uh, it has crossed over to the last uh, part of the divide. Even us journalists or uh, some of people who call themselves uh, activists, you realize that uh, once they are on the other side of the, of the divide, they look at the government, the way government is working, and then they are not agreeing with uh, what government is doing, policies and actions and all that. It's very, very easy for you to start capturing the government and say, oh, this is what the others are doing. I mean, I can also liken that to the game of football or game of IU or the game of draft. When you are standing by, you are seeing moves. You will see moves better than those who are playing. But once you step into the field of play, you see that uh, you will no longer be seeing those moves. So that's exactly what is happening now. The, what has changed is that Five was on the other side of the divide. He was seeing things better. But now being a player, a political actor in this game, now he, he can no longer see what he was seeing then. And he also used the NSC to further his net, to further his net. If you remember that uh, that time, he wanted his, uh, go, his uh, party to be in government. So he, it was OK for him, for him to join forces to NSC, to bring that government down, not bring that in the manner of speaking anyway, but again, now he has uh, got the mandate of the people, and then he's now in government. You see that the pendulum has swung the other way, and it's now against him. So what has changed is that what he was seeing then, he's no longer seeing them. Because if you are outside government, it's easy for you to be the best 
president or to be the press uh, the governor. But once you are there, all the problems you are not seeing will now be facing you in the, uh, uh, I mean, physically. And then you now know that uh, the, the business of government is different from where you see it while you are uh, on the flanks. Hmm. But, but why does it seem that when it comes to having negotiations, you know, it, it's a challenge? Because we know that Ayub Awaba mentioned, you know, the Labour Act. He specifically mentioned Section 20, saying yes. that the Labour Act specifies that, you know, if such, you know, mass disengagement was to take place, you know, the government should have a sit down and consult with Labour. But they did not do that. And then they resorted to their last option, which is protest. So why do we see, seem to have a government that is so averse to both you know, um, dialogue and, and, and peaceful protest? Well, you we look at, uh, if you trace the history of uh, people who became um, what I call uh, accidental politicians, it is always what they do. Erufai Abinisho has never been a politician. Now, if Erufai were to be a thorough better politician, I'm sure he would be able to look at how to sit down to know that even right now, we are having people being traumatized. We are having people who are losing their jobs. We are having people who don't even know when the next meal will come. So a thorough bed politician will not go the way of Erufai. But Erufai, as we say, you know him. He's, um, he's always the, what we call down south here, the, the gra -gra man. But gra -gra in most cases, will not, not solve certain things like that because there are laws involved. There are civil service rules. There are uh, there is uh, this uh, labor act which is in the exclusive uh, exclusive list, and Erufai, the law that is putting forward, cannot have overriding power. Or, I mean, on uh, the labor act which is in the exclusive list. So whether you talk about uh, left or center or anywhere, Erufai, this is the one war that he can't win. And I think what he should need to do is to say, okay, you know what, for the for public interest. Come, let's go back to the negotiation table so that we can, can continue negotiating and begin to uh, look at the gray areas and see how they can get those things out. A couple of the newspapers this morning uh, reported that the federal government was uh, going to wade into these uh, issues. In what ways do you think the Nigerian government should step in um, to create, of course, a uh, peace? Well, first, you, know, you must know the reason, the, one of the reasons that they want to weigh in is that the labor, the Oil workers already threatened they are going to be down to us, and you, you know, guess. and that will that will that will uh, affect the whole country, not just Kaduna State. And then the government itself that is fighting right now to be accepted. The government that, that uh, you look at the economy is not uh, working as they they, they intended it to be. And then you are having this image 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 of the government being battered. I mean, central government. I mean, it, you can't allow that government to also sit down and then allow just a state out of 36 to now be having negative effect on uh, what they're already doing. So the, re the way they should come in is to call Erufai, and then incidentally, Erufai is an APC go uh, governor, and then the government has set is APC uh, uh, government. So they have uh, a cause to now say, okay, come, let's talk about, let's just tread cautiously so that it does not uh, become a conflagration that will consume all of us at the end of the day. So they have a, they, they have a lot to play, they have a lot of to play to call him to order and then to uh, make sure that he goes back to what usually happens when there is labor dispute, you go for negotiation and not to begin to bring the uh, martial, martial laws that are, that are irrelevant in, in uh, today's uh, uh, government in Nigeria. And uh, can the NLC president truly be charged with uh, economic sabotage? Oh, well, uh, if I, if the loss is, is, uh, is quoting, I mean, it's laughable. Because if you recall that even when we had the military, I mean, during the military era, I think there's a, uh, Specifically, Babangida era, when you had the University of Ibadan lecturers going on strike, and the government had to use its military fiat and its um, um, strength to say they remain sad. But the government didn't win. You knew, I mean, you remember that it was even military government where they, they can, they can rub, ride rub, rub shot over everybody. But they had to throw the pass of peace and then they came back and negotiated. So, um, I, don't, I don't see what he has done wrong, and they'll not be slamming him with. Uh, uh, economic sabotage is, is laughable. All right. I think we can uh, wrap up here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Charles uh, Ideho, for Thank joining you, us this morning. Uh, thanks for yeah. your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we're moving straight to discussing and bringing in now the uh, 
uh, national uh, leader of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba. He joins us uh, after this very short break. <laughs> 